Hi everyone, this is Jeff, and this is the second in a three-part training series on how to use modern CryEngine game art assets in 3D programs such as Blender. This series is focused on Blender, but a lot of the information can apply to other programs, such as Maya and 3ds Max. In addition, a lot of the procedures used in manipulating MWO assets also work for other CryEngine games, such as Star Citizen and Armored Warfare. So once you master these basic skills, you should be able to apply them to other games. In this video, we will go over how to bulk convert a large number of files using PowerShell commands and the Asset Importer PowerShell script, and create custom node layouts to improve the quality of renders. Please be aware of all applicable copyright rules and don't steal. Thank you. All right, let's get started. In the last video, we went over how to convert a single object at a time into a Collada file, which you could then import in, into Blender, and it would uh, create a material for it, but you had to tweak it by adding the normal. It was kind of a pain in the butt, and if you're going to create a scene with a lot of assets in it, it's going to take a long time to convert them all over. One object took probably about five minutes just to clean up and get ready, and that's, you know, when you have thousands of objects that you want to do to put into a scene, that's just not going to be very efficient. So I have made a tool called the Asset Importer to help automate this. And along with this and some PowerShell scripts, we should be able to bulk import these things into Blender in a much more efficient and repeatable manner. So if we take a look at this, it's uh, just a PowerShell script. You're gonna wanna download it and put it in your scripts directory. You can see for me, we have it right here. And I have it in scripts, which is in the path, which means I can run it from anywhere in the, on the machine without having to source a directory. If you don't have it in path, you got to make sure you type the path out. So be sure when you're doing that, you take that into consideration. All right, so let's take a look at the Mech Lab for MechWarrior Online. And specifically, this is under Objects Environments Front End Mech Lab. There's a lot of nice stuff under Environments. All, all the assets in the maps are located in there. Uh, but for Mech Lab, you can see there are a bunch of directories for various assets like the catwalks and the railings, uh, workbenches, hangar doors, elevators, consoles, all kinds of fun stuff. But what we want to do is be able to convert everything without having to use CGF Converter one at a time at, on each of the files underneath there. So go to catwalk railings. You can see there's a whole bunch of CGF files. And yeah, who wants to type? Typing sucks. So let's go to PowerShell and type, we'll run a quick command here uh, using a recursive loop to go through and convert all those CGF files. And how you do that is you do a for each string file in get child items, which will get all the files underneath it. Uh, recurse to tell it to go to every directory underneath it. And then you got to put the filters in there, star.cgf, star.cga, star.chr, and star.skin. And there's probably not any skins or CHRs in here, but uh, we want to add them just to be complete. And then you want to do CGF converter. If it's not in the path, you need to source that. You type uh, object uh, st string file to get the name of it. And then go to uh, object directory, object dir slash depot slash MWO. Again, always use that. It makes it easier to find the files. And then you hit enter, and it's going to go through and convert everything. This will probably take a few minutes, and I may speed it up. Yeah, this is going to take a while. All right, it finished. It looks like it had some problems at the end here, trying to convert some of the files, but let's not worry about that too much. All right, now that if we go into catwalks, let's start with this one. You can usually have all these DAE files, which are the Collada versions of them. We are going to want to use Asset Importer at this point to create a script, a Python script, that we can use in Blender to import all these objects in one thing. And the way you use that is you just type Asset, asset Importer, and then Object Directory. Again, I'll use Object Directory, depot slash MWO. And what this is going to do is going to go through, it's going to go through and find all the materials in there and make its own material for it. Uh, you can see in this one, it looks like it didn't have any, it went straight on, but what ended up happening is it had a duplicate name. I, I know this from testing out earlier, is there were two materials in here with the same name. And that may cause a problem in the future, but uh, we'll just keep on pressing on. Uh, then it went through and found all the DAE files and made another import and copied them all into a file called import.txt. So if we look at import.txt, You'll see what happened here. Here's the trim material, right? It's creating node groups, setting them, setting it to cycles. Uh, all the different materials are up here. Uh, at the bottom, it's going to go through and import each of the objects and then assign the proper materials to them as best it can figure out. 
And then at the very end, it's going to create a bunch of groups for those objects. The reason it's creating these groups is it makes it easier to link in to other blend files if you're trying to create a scene. All right, so you're going to want to select all these things, copy them, control C, and then let's just start Blender up. Get it to the right window. And then this is my particular layout. Don't necessarily want that. The default one will look like this one, but it'll probably have a cube on here. It says 2.79. It does need to be 2.79 or earlier. You're going to need a Python console, so let's open this up. Change this to Python console. Open a little bit more, and then again, copy all this, control C, paste it in here, control V. And yeah, it is that simple. Now you have all these different components that were in that directory. You got pipes and catwalks and all kinds of fun stuff. It did uh, create some objects that ended up way out in the middle of nowhere. You can just select them and hit Alt G and it will reset them to the local area, which is great. Um, if you want to see what this looks like, let's go hit Z numpad zero to go through the camera view. And we're going to change some stuff around in here go to GPU, GPU compute. Increase the resolution to 100, change the performance so it uses bigger squares, 256 by 256. And then we're going to want to do some lighting. So go here, use nodes, change the color to be a nice bright white. All right, something like that. And ambient occlusion so the lighting is a little bit better. And if you hit F12, it'll go through here and start rendering it out. This will take a minute. And that took about, yeah, it took about just a minute. Uh, you can see here, this is normally a flat piece of uh, geometry, but with the normal map, you can see it's nice. looks like it has some depth to it. Uh, it looks like it, the normals might be dialed up pretty strong on there, but uh, if you want to go into the node groups and adjust the strength of that, it's a good idea. All right, so now we have this. Let's save this as a blend file, and this is going to just going to be basically an asset file that we can use. So let's save as MacBay. Uh, no, we want to go to Catwalks and Railings call it catwalks and railings, hit save. And we want to do one more thing to make it a little bit easier to import into a scene. Let's go to file. Uh, hang on, let's save that. Do it look like I saved. Go to under data previews is batch generate previews. And what this is going to do is you select the blend file that you just created. It's going to go through with all the different objects in that scene and create a thumbnail. So when you're trying to import them in another scene, you will have an idea what they look like as opposed to just the name. And this will take a minute as well. All right, that is it. All right, uh, again, if you want to tweak everything in here, this is the time to do it. Then you close Blender and away you go. All right, so we now have a nice blend file in here. Uh, blend. And I made another scene one this is from earlier, but you have catwalks.blend, which can, contains the information from what we did. Now, the nice thing about doing it with the groups in the importer is that it makes it easy to import these into another scene. So let's test that out real quick or go through it real quick so you can see what it looks like. Blender. And let's minimize this and get this out of the way. And there's a couple of ways of using this in a scene if you want to create a, a scene. You go to, you can either link them or append them. If you use append, it will copy that object into this particular blend file, which is not what you want. If you end up changing the original object, you'll have to change it in all the files where you want that change to take effect. If you use a link, it will link it to that blend file that we just created. And if you need to make a change because you're not happy with the way the material looks, or if you want to scale it differently, you can just change it in the, in the master file and it will affect every place that it's linked. So what we want to do is go to link, and then go to catwalks and railings. And if we, uh, here, this is the blend file, so you select it. Uh, click on this to display the thumbnails where it's possible. Then all the different objects that we created are under group. So go to group, and here you'll see the thumbnails that you want to import. So let's import a bunch of these just to uh, show what it's like. Uh, let's do stairs, some catwalk pieces, railing, railing. No, let's not do that railing, let's do this railing and maybe some pipes for to go underneath. And, and then you just click on link and you will see all the objects that are here. I do have it in Blender render, so I gotta change that to cycles and change this to materials so you can actually see the materials. And yeah, so let's see if we can position some of these. Let's duplicate that with Shift D, then on the X plane 
and whoopsie, shift D again, X, move them over. And of course we're gonna want railings so people don't fall off. D, move those in X direction and select all these and I want to move them to where they're supposed to be. Let's get rid of that one. And then oh, I need a, <clears throat> need a couple more, it looks like, or at least one more. All right, and here's our basically our scene. And then seven, let's duplicate this and grab it in the Y direction so there's railing on the other side. Then let's rotate. Rotate 180, so they're flipped to face in the right way. All right. Actually, I don't know if that's the right way. It's probably the wrong way. I don't know which side it's supposed to be on. And there you go. You have just basically a simple catwalk scene with a ladder that goes up to it. Now let's get rid of this because we don't need it for this little fake scene that we have here. And that's how you create scenes. Now, if you want to link other stuff, I've actually created some uh, additional blend files. Let's add a workbench in here. Go to group. Look at the thumbnails. Let's add that and some. Let's do one of each of these, see what they look like, right? Let's grab X, grab Y, slide them in there. Obviously, this is a. Let's do grab Shift Z so it won't change it in the Z. And what is this guy? This just looks like a regular Shift Z. This little low too. So I'm like that. And. It's kind of interesting. It just doesn't look like it has a support there. So maybe it's just supposed to come off of a wall. Rotate Z, 90. Grab Y. Okay, this is not a very practical one. But if we look through the camera, grab it, and then we just render with F12. Uh, actually, let's change all the settings here again. GPU, 100%. Performance. Lighting. Pump that up, ambient occlusion to make it look a little more realistic, and hit F12. And there you have it. It took about 45 seconds just to do this really simple scene. I mean, obviously, this desk is the wrong way, and this probably shouldn't be like that. Uh, but you can see there's still a ton of work that needs to happen here. you got to put in a skybox and volumetrics and lighting and uh, animations, particles, all kinds of stuff to make it look like an actual scene but this isn't bad this is you know it's this shows you how you just take all the assets and you can slap them in to create a scene and uh, it's fairly simple and actually let's save this as our scene save as scene and now whenever you need to uh, if you're going to create a scene for a video that you're going to make you just create those throw in the characters that you want and animate them and everything works great so that is it for this tutorial. The next one is going to be about importing mechs along with our armatures. Uh, it'll probably be a little bit quicker, but it's a very similar process and uh, a lot of fun because mechs are wonderful. So thank you for watching and stay tuned.